What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. So winter is coming up as you guys can tell by the sweater and the weather that's been happening. Uh, summer is not exactly here anymore. It's starting to cool down a little bit and it's not quite winter yet, but the temperatures are dropping from the 30 degree weather to normal stuff. Guy with the motorcycle is just driving by right now and he's got a full jacket on so summer is not here anymore. But what does that mean? That means snow, that means salt, that means getting your car ready for winter. Now obviously you're going to do the standard procedure of throwing winter wheels and tires on your car, changing the windshield washer fluid that's found inside your car, and a couple other things. But I'm going to be going a little bit further and I'm going to be protecting the underside of my car in two ways. Not only am I going to be spraying every single part of unpainted metal, well I'm going to paint it, but I'm also going to go one step further and protect my coilovers. So if you guys live in a northern state, or if you guys live in a place that the roads get covered with snow and salt, what you're going to notice is that after a while, your cars are going to get rusty. So what I'm going to be doing is preventing that from happening. I'm going to be doing this maintenance every single year, and I have been doing that to my car. This year, I'm going to be going a little bit further. I'm going to be taking stuff apart, I'm going to be painting things up, and I'm going to be making the underside of the car look perfectly new again. If you guys have a modified car, you guys have probably modified your suspension in many different ways. The biggest way that you guys can change your suspension is by replacing the stock struts and shocks with a set of coilovers. That's what I did and that's what I have on my Accord. I'm going to be keeping that installed in my Accord over the course of the winter. I do have my stock suspension but I don't want to raise the car up 4 inches and go with stock ride feel and everything just so that I save my coilovers. So I'm like okay, I want to keep my coilovers in, I want to protect them but I don't want to damage my coils. What can I do? How do I keep them from not getting super rusty? And how do I maintain this look? Well, what I'm actually going to be doing is throwing my carp in the air, throwing it on jack stands, and showing you what I've done so far to the front of this thing, and what I'm going to be continuing on doing with the back of the car. I'm going to show you the full process. Stay tuned. So I have my car jacked up in the air and the upper ball joint that you're seeing right here on my upper control arm I replaced not too long ago. While I was at it, what I did was I cleaned up the entire wheel well, I removed the wheel liner and I cleaned up and painted the entire undercarriage of the car, at least for the front end, and made it nice, black, uniform and I made it ready so that once winter comes around the snow and salt is not going to be able to affect it. I painted up the entire wheel well, I painted up the control arms, I painted the subframe, pretty much everything that's steel and that could rust, I painted. Something else I did was I installed this shock cover. So this cover that you're seeing right here is completely wrapping my coilover and protecting it from the elements. This coilover bag wraps the entire thing and it goes from the top to the bottom. It's made out of a good fabric that's going to protect and resist any water, any salt, any snow, and anything that's going to come in contact with it. The point of this is to keep it in good condition, it's to keep the coilover from seizing, and it's to keep it from rusting come winter time. The install itself took me about less than a minute to install once you have your wheel off, and you can go ahead and do this on each one of your corners on your car. As for the rear of the car, I didn't touch anything back here, so the way that you see it is the way that the car was. So I haven't touched the back end of the car since last winter. And you can see that it's not that bad. It's a little dirty, there's a little bit of gunk and everything on there, but it's not super rusty, there's not a lot of stuff back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up and show you guys how I went from basically the front of the car and make the back of the car look the exact same way. So my suspension components, my control arms, the entire body, the rear subframe, I'm going to show you guys how to clean it up and protect it along with protecting the coilover and preventing that from seizing. Now is the best time to do this considering winter is right around the corner, so let's jump right into this. Step one is going to be removing every part that you can so that you can clean up the body and make it look nice. On the rear suspension of this car, we've got this plastic piece right here that we're going to remove because there's still metal found underneath of this. This is actually leading from the gas cap and it's going all the way down into the fuel tank. So we're going to take this off and we're going to also paint up the metal that's found behind this plastic cover. So to remove this little panel, I'm going to be using a panel popper and a flathead screwdriver just to push out the center part of each one of these little push pins. And then once you have the center out, you can push out the outer part. Once you have the center part of it out, you can remove the bigger part of it. Now sometimes these clips can be a pain in the butt, and if you guys have worked on these cars before and whatever, if you guys have worked with these little clips, you guys know how much of a pain in the butt they are. So if you can beforehand, buy or have a couple of these extra clips so that once you break them, not if, once you break them, you're going to be able to replace them. To take off this plastic piece, there's one of these clips right here, there's another one found on the other side, and then there's going to be one additional one that's found above it. With those three tabs removed, the entire plastic cover will come out in one shot. 
So here we have more of the panels on the inside of the fender now exposed. So we're gonna clean all of this up and get this prepped so we can clean it, paint it, and make it look nice. Instead of scrubbing and going inside the wheel well and spending a long time with cleaning it out that way, I'm gonna be using a pressure washer right here along with a 10 degree nozzle that I have right here, a 25 degree nozzle in addition to that, and this little angled piece that's going to allow me to get in very small cracks and crevices and you know some very hard to reach areas. So I'm gonna be including all of these in the description box if you guys wanna pick something like this up. This angled piece is going to make cleaning the wheel wells so much easier because you can get any hard to reach area because if you can't hit it that way, just turn it and you can get a harder angle. Don't like it that way, turn it this way. And the same kind of thing. So I'm gonna be using all of this kind of stuff to clean the underside of each one of the wheel wells, get rid of all the grease, all the dirt, and all the baked on stuff that's really on there. Going back to the car, I'm gonna be putting the 25 degree tip on the end of my pressure washer wand, and I'm gonna start off by spraying down everything in the wheel well with this. This should remove all the loose dirt, and even some of the dirt that's kind of embedded on there. This is gonna do a very good job at cleaning out the stuff that's just loose and on any of the panels. So you're just gonna do a, basically a quick rinse down on everything. This is not gonna get off most of the grease. You're gonna to have to get really close to it with this kind of tip in order to remove any grease or anything. So I'm gonna be just using this to start off by cleaning the dirt, and then we're gonna move Move on to a different one. When you're done with that, you're going to take the 25 degree tip off and we're going to be swapping it with the 10 degree with the little angled bend. So we're going to have it like this. We're going to keep it straight for now and we're going to clean up everything that's really embedded into all the panels. So any dirt that's in the undercoat, any dirt that's kind of hard to get out um, that you weren't able to remove with a 25 degree tip, we're going to be using this 10 degree tip to do exactly that. The benefit of using this kind of tip too with the little bend is that if there's any area that you couldn't get, say on the back side of the wheel well, you can use this tip and clean the back side of it very easily. So be careful when you're doing this though. The 10 degree tip is going to be a little bit stronger than the 25, so if you bring it too close to some paint, paint that you want to keep on the car, it might strip. So just be careful and keep conscious of that when you're using this. Once you have the attachment for the pressure washer, you can use this to also clean and pressure wash the underside of your car. So if you want to clean this up and get it perfectly mint, you want to make it clean, 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 this is how you would do it. The nice thing about this too is that once winter comes around and there's salt that's laid down on the road, you can turn your tip upwards, put the wand underneath the car, and with the car on the ground, you can pressure wash and remove all the salt very easily. It's a cheap attachment and makes life super, super easy, especially for anyone that lives up north. Once you're done spraying it down, you think you've got everything good, you're gonna let this thing dry. You can use any kind of way that you want to get rid of all the water, but you need to remove all of it. You can use a leaf blower, you can use a compressor with compressed air, you can use a towel, or you can even let it sit outside. But the point of this is that you wanna get all the water removed so that any paint that we put on any of the control arms or the body is all dry and the paint will stick. The pressure washer will clean about a good 90% of all the dirt and everything that's on there. Now the last 10% you need to actually physically touch and remove all the dirt. So what I'm going to be using is a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a terry cloth. You're just going to spray a little bit on there and wipe everything down. So even after using the pressure washer you can see that there's still a little bit of dirt that comes off each one of the little panels found in the wheel well. You're going to get every single square inch that you want to paint cleaned up with the IPA and your towel. After that, we're gonna begin by working on our coilover. While we let everything inside the wheel well dry up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on the coilover to prevent this from seizing. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my spanner wrenches that came with my coilovers, and I'm just gonna loosen them up. Now, the reason why I'm gonna do that is I wanna take each one of these collars out of position, and then I wanna apply any seize on these threads so that come summertime or whenever I need to adjust these again, it's going to be very easy. So realistically, you want to try and do this without actually having the entire coilover spinning. The reason why you want to do that is so that you can change this out and you're not going to have to get an alignment. Now realistically, you probably should get another alignment after doing this, but what I'm going to do is just roll these collars up. I'm going to do one at a time and I'm going to make sure that there's anti-seize in all of this. 
The anti-seize that I'm going to be using is from Permatex, and it's an aluminum anti-seize. The part number is 80078, and the reason why I'm going with this is because this stuff is good for very cold temperatures, and that's basically what we want. So it's good from minus 55 degrees Celsius all the way up to 870. So I really don't think these coils are going to get that hot. So this stuff is good for that entire range. So all we need to do is get a little bit of this stuff and apply it on the threads. Now it doesn't need to be perfectly caked on there. Um, the reason is once you actually get your collar and roll it down and lock it into position, it's going to spread any of the lubricant in the areas that we couldn't get with the brush. Just try to get a you know, pretty good job now. And once that's done, just slide this down and it will work itself in. And just like that, that collar is pretty good. We're going to tighten this up, not that. We're going to turn it this way. And we're going to try to keep the shock body from spinning. To change the height of this shock so we can raise or lower the suspension, the shock body itself needs to spin. So if we can keep that stationary and lock the collar in place, we're not going to change the suspension. We're going to replicate the exact same thing for these two collars up here. You're going to bring them down, put anti-seize on the threads, put them back up to the exact same position that they were. Now ideally you want to do this before you install new coilovers on your car, especially if you know that you're going to be driving with those coilovers during the winter time. Now another thing that's going to be very handy if you want, if you're really crazy and you want to make sure that all the lubricant gets inside the shock body's threads, what you can do is disconnect the coilover from the body of the car, remove the bolts up top, remove the bolts down low, and you can actually lubricate the entire body of the shaft that's down here inside the cup. So this part right here, if you want, you can lubricate it all with anti-seize and it's not going to corrode on you. Now I'm not going to go to that extent only because I'm going to be putting those coilover covers on top of this and it's going to prevent it 100% from getting corroded any more than what it is now. Another good option for taking care of all these threads and everything, if you don't want to disconnect these things or even if you can't, maybe they're seized or tight or for whatever reason you don't want to change them. If you install some of this stuff, you spray a little bit of this PB Blaster silicone lubricant on these threads, it'll work its way into the coilover. So what I mean by that is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you this little hole. You can see that that hole right there goes down into more threads for the shock body. There's more threads up above here. And if you spray this in anywhere of this, so up here on these threads and even inside that little hole down there, what you can do is you can lubricate the entire internals of the shock without actually disconnecting the shock collar right there. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of this in here and I want to show you guys how well this actually works. You put a little bit at a time and it will actually fill in the threads of the shock a little bit at a time. Do this a few times and everything's going to stay nicely lubricated. Before we go anywhere, I'm just going to be using a rag and cleaning up any excess that's basically on the outside um, of the shock. So I've got a pretty good feeling that this is very good and a nice way to prevent these from seizing. Now before I go ahead and install the shock cover, what I'm going to do is clean up the entire wheel well spray it down and make it all look perfect. So Before you go ahead and spray down any of the areas you want to, we're going to need to mask up a few things. So I'm going to start by masking up the coilover. I'm going to be using a little bit of tape and drape and regular 3M tape to cover up the entire shock and shock body. I'm going to be covering up the tube, the plastic part down here that's leading from the fuel filler cap all the way down into the fuel tank. So I'm just going to be covering that up because we don't want to get any paint on the rubber. I'm also going to be using a regular plastic bag to cover up the entire wheel and hub assembly. That way we're not going to get any painted surfaces on the hub, on the brake, on the brake caliper or anything else. The entire wheel well isn't supposed to be looking flawless now. That's what the coat of paint is going to be there for. So if there is any dirt, if there is a little bit of rust, that's not a huge deal. But the more amount of this stuff that you can clean up now, the better and longer this coating is going to last. So any rust that you see, even if you can hit it with a couple seconds of a wire brush, it's going to make a big difference. So you can see right here, there's a tiny bit of rust. Any kind of little brush, any way of removing as much rust as you can is always a good thing to do beforehand. Even like a little clip like that, or the little subframe parts right here that have a little bit of rust on them, 
If you can sand that area down and then clean the surface area so there's no dust or anything left, the paint is going to adhere and it's going to look really nice. So these here are the paints that I'm going to be using. This is a dupa color high build flea coating and it's kind of like an undercoating but it's more towards a paint as opposed to a rubberized coating. Now I'm going to be using this satin black finish here but you can also get it in a gloss black or even a silver finish. It's entirely up to you whichever kind of look you're going for. I personally like going with suspension components in this color and everything else from the chassis to everything else in this color. That's just me, you can do it all one color, all the other, or even choose a different color. But I love using these products and you guys will see shortly as to why that is. So give the can a shake, make sure you agitate all the contents inside the can very well and then just go to town with spray painting basically everything in black. So you're not really looking for a crazy technique, you're not really looking for runs or anything, but you're just gonna try and do a light coat in the beginning, and then you're gonna build up your coats from there. Realistically, you wanna do about two to three light coats for the entire thing, or you can go heavier if you want. If you don't really care about runs, and I personally don't really care in the wheel wells, um, you can kinda go a little bit heavier with this stuff. Now I'm kinda going for a decent look where it's all going to be nice and gloss black. I'm trying to get rid of like the little brownish that you're seeing from the undercoating that has the dirt trapped and embedded in it. So I'm gonna be getting rid of that and trying to make it look as nice as possible. If you had to choose for your car, what side would you rather want? Would you want this left side that's nicely coated and painted nice and black? Or would you want this side? that still is blech and brown and gross and still has a little bit of rust down here and wherever. I think it's pretty obvious as to which one you guys would rather choose. So this was about five minutes with half a can of uh, paint. And I'm gonna continue on and do the exact same process to everything over here. I'm not gonna bore you guys too much. I just wanna show you what I've done. So I'm gonna be going over everything, making everything nice and black, painting anything that's rusted, painting anything that's even not rusted. And once you're done, everything should look brand spanking new. Now you're gonna let this sit for a couple minutes between each coat, I'd say about 10. Go on for a second coat, finish up with a third, and then call it a day. After you've let it dry, you can go ahead and remove the bag that's covering up the hub. You can remove the masking that's covering the coilover and you can see for yourself how fantastic this looks. You can see that everything looks nice and it's gonna be completely coated and protected over the winter time. So with the body ready to go, it's time to cover up the coilover with what I have next. Now this cover that I have right here is sold in pairs of two. So if you wanna do your full car, you're gonna to need to buy two sets. They're available in both black and available in red. Now of course, because red is faster, obviously I went with that. What you're gonna be doing is Velcroing it around your strut and then if you have to, you're gonna zip tie the bag a little bit closer to the strut so it doesn't interfere with your wheel and tire setup. Depending on your wheel offset, it might come in contact with it, but before you actually go and drive the car to see if you need to actually use zip ties, what you can do is put your wheel on and if it comes in contact with the tire or the wheel, just zip tie it onto the strut more and you'll be clear. With everything in the wheel well protected and coated for winter, I'm not gonna have any issues with the undercarriage of my car rusting out. I'm not gonna have to worry about my coilovers rusting out anymore on me and even seizing afterwards. Changing the ride height, making sure the coilover isn't actually seized is going to be very simple with these coilover covers. So I'm gonna be linking these in the description box. If you guys want, you guys can pick up a full set of four. Now they come in pairs of two, so if you wanna get a full set for your car, you're gonna need to buy two of them. It's still not too bad outside now, so I'm gonna put my summer tires back on the car, and when the temperatures drop below seven degrees consistently, that's when I'm gonna throw on my winters. By just looking at the car, you wouldn't be able to notice that we have these coilover sleeves on there. It's gonna fully protect the car during the winter time, as I've mentioned countless times in this video. By just looking at the car, you couldn't tell that anything's been done to it. But what's really nice about this is that while you're driving in the winter, salt's gonna be going thrown up all in there, water's gonna be thrown up in there, and everything that isn't coated and isn't covered is going to rust. If you guys are in an area down south that you don't have to worry about something like this, you are so lucky. I really wish I was in the same situation as you. But unfortunately, that's not the way it is. So with my car fully protected and ready to go, I'm ready for winter. Now for these coilover covers, there's two different sizes that I've found. There's a three and a half inch outer diameter and a five inch. I went with the five just to play it safe because I wanted the coilover to be completely covered from the elements. Now as you guys saw from the rear, I did have to zip tie the bottom of it and I feel like if I went with a three and a half, I would have been okay. 
but I didn't want to be cut short um, in the event that I needed that to fit and it didn't. So what, what I would do, I would get a measuring tape and measure the outside circumference of the biggest part of your coilover and that's the size cover that you need. Worst case scenario, get the big one and put zip ties on it and call it a day. So if you guys want to pick up any of the products that I use today, I made it super easy for you. I have everything linked in the description box so you guys can pick up whatever you want for yourselves. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.